In Good Shape, your weekly dose of health information on DWTV. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio every week to offer their expert advice on In Good Shape. And how to prevent migraine attacks and treat them effectively, that's what we'll be discussing now with our guest in the studio, Dr. Thomas Lempert, neurologist from Berlin. Thanks Hello. for joining us. Hello. Dr. Lempert, are there telltale signs to differentiate a migraine from other forms of headaches? Yes, a migraine headache is usually a severe headache, which is in one side of your head and often has a throbbing quality. So that makes it different from the usual tension type headaches that everybody probably knows. Mm -hmm. Because it's one-sided, that's Ye the main... Yes, but in two-thirds it's one-sided. But if you have a severe throbbing headache on both sides, it's still very likely to be migraine. Particularly if you have additional symptoms like sensitivity to light, sensitivity to sound, you're bothered by practically everything and uh, you're irritated, nervous, that uh, makes a migraine a migraine. Mm -hmm. um, what other symptoms are associated with migraines that you wouldn't think about when you think of well, headaches? One important thing that, that many know is the nausea that comes with the migraines, but the unusual symptoms uh, are the scintillating lights that many patients see before the uh, proper attack starts, before they get the headache, they have these visual disturbances for several minutes. And also vertigo can be a symptom of migraine. And some patients have only the vertigo without associated headache at that time and still there's a migraine behind it. Mm, so it sounds really complicated. It's best to get it checked out, I guess, yes. if you're unsure. Yes. Um, to understand about the treatment, we have to know a little bit about the causes. The pain is caused by contracting and expanding uh, blood vessels in the brain. But why do they do that? Why does it happen in the well, first place? It's, it's not really known, but it's important to note that migraine is not just a psychological thing. Even if you may have psychological stress as a trigger, it's a biochemical reaction of the brain with disturbance of lots of transmitters. But we don't have the whole picture. We don't really know what causes it. Mm -hmm. Who is prone to migraines? Women in the first place, two thirds are women, young age, middle age. Uh, once you get older, it may, may disappear. Um, and sometimes there's also a genetic component. If you have a mother who suffers from migraine, your risk of getting is, is bigger. Mm -hmm. um, is there such a thing as a migraine personality, someone who's very much prone to it because of their characteristics? Yes, there was a, a long time ago a subject and many studies have been done, but the answer is no. But probably there is a behavior that stimulates migraines when you work long hours without taking a break, forgetting to drink, forgetting to have lunch, then you are more prone to get migraines. Mm -hmm. We'll speak about the triggers a bit more in a second. Um, there is no cure because the causes are so diverse or, or not and really very cure. well researched, yes. But um, there are pain relieving medications out there. Can you tell us from your experience in the clinic what works best? Well, there's a scheme you start with the simple painkillers and take them with water that makes them act quicker. And if you feel nauseated, it's better to have something against the nausea before, like 15 minutes before. And then if a simple painkiller is not sufficient, you go to the newer generation of migraine drugs, the triptans. And if a triptan doesn't work, then you try to combine the two, a painkiller plus a triptan, and then you have a quite good chance to control it. So there's lots of options there, um, but there's also some dangers. We've had a viewer writing to us, one of the many viewers, Mira Rijet from South Arabia would like to know how many painkillers uh, you can take before it becomes harmful. Yes, that is a danger. From overuse of a painkiller, you can have a chronic headache. So the limit would be around 10 to 15 doses per month. And uh, if you go beyond that, then you run a high risk. And chronic migraine is often an analgesic overuse headache. And then the solution would be to stop it uh, altogether. From your experience, what are the most effective ways to prevent migraine attacks in the first place? Well, we have lifestyle adjustments and preventive medication. 
And lifestyle adjustments include that you have regular habits like sleeping regularly, eating regularly, taking breaks in between, but also starting to do regular exercise twice a week for at least 30 minutes. And studies have cho shown that all these non-drug measures are effective. Mm -hmm. But also preventive medication is often needed once you have frequent attacks, let's say three times per month. And, and if you have particularly long attacks over two, three, four days, then it's worthwhile trying preventive medication. Mm -hmm. Well, preventive medication means you have to take something all the time. Yes. What about side effects there? They are much better tolerated than the uh, painkillers in the long term. So it's no problem to take a preventive drug every day as long as it's the appropriate drug for you. And that's why you have to see a neurologist to make the choice. Mm -hmm. Botox is something that's being mentioned as a preventive measure yes, there. Yes, it's, it's new on the agenda and therefore it's hyped. Uh, it helps in some patients a little bit, but not more than that. Mm -hmm. Right, so let's speak about the lifestyle changes that you mentioned. They're very sort of easier for people individually to, to come by. Um, exercise, how important is it in stress management? What's your view? Ex exercise is important. You don't have to go to the limits while you exercise. A moderate increase of the pulse to, let's say, 120 is sufficient. But you should get into the habit of doing this. And after two or three months, uh, many patients see that their migraines get less intense. Mm -hmm. What about stress management? If it's a biochemical reaction in the body, why is stress management important? Um, stress is the trigger of this biochemical reaction. So when you influence it there and in the first uh, instance, then you have a, a chance to uh, have less migraine. What do you think about um, preventive measures like acupuncture or manual therapy? Um, acupuncture has some effect, so that's uh, worth a trial sometimes, whereas uh, manual th therapy doesn't have an effect. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a viewer writing to us, um, Akash Taylor from India is asking on the behalf of a friend if migraines can disappear in time. Yes, time. That, that's the good news. Even if you suffer severely from your migraines as a woman, you have a chance of two in three that after men menopause it will disappear. Migraine is active during particular years in your life, but it will disappear eventually. Mm -hmm. So it might just disappear and in the meantime you've got effective ways to treat yes, the pain. Yes, and to live with it. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much for being our guest today. Thanks.